Hi, everyone. Hey, lots of lights. Um, who here has heard of Bitcoin? Benny. You, you Hello. Hello. Yes, you keep Who's here, who, who here has heard of Bitcoin? No one? Anyway, if you bought Bitcoin yesterday, you would be $50 richer today. Um, what is happening in the Bitcoin space uh, is India decided to shut down one-seventh of its uh, cash flow, uh, discontinue 501,000 rupee bills, and suddenly everyone is buying Bitcoin. Why am I mentioning Bitcoin? Before I dive into that, or let me finish my story, a mysterious person called Satoshi Nakamoto eight years ago wrote, wrote a white paper describing a decentralized algorithm with which you can process payment. So all of you have mobile phones. You can install a wallet and put Bitcoin to the value of one euro or a million euro on it as we speak and send it to anybody else, anywhere, el anywhere else on the planet, instantly, without a bank account, without approval, without an intermediary or an agent, for a few cents. That little innovation has spawned a, a whole industry. Uh, what today arguably is the most exciting and controversial open source project uh, on the planet. Since I got involved with Bitcoin a few years ago, I've been doing research on behalf of the uh, Canadian Ministries of Finance, International Trade and Innovation into how we can apply fintech uh, innovation and blockchain, distributed ledger innovation in the space uh, for government, business to business, citizen services and so forth. Um, and we had a very exciting phase of these developments indeed. Blockchain technology <coughs> now affects potentially all aspects of commerce and information management. And I'll touch on a few of these aspects shortly in terms of use cases. Our time is limited, so I'm going to step through it rather quickly. But the key point is that in a recent survey by Accenture, 83 of executives who believe trust is a cornerstone of the digital economy feels that over 10% of the GDP of the global economy could be based on blockchain technology or be disrupted by blockchain technology by 2070. Uh, sorry, sorry 20, yeah, 2070. The year blockchain is expected to take hold for financial service early adopters is next year, which is literally just around the corner. And we know about R3 and other consortia really getting into the space in a big way to look at how they can innovate internally or open up new market opportunities and create new channels to market. So what we see is that open source as a key driver here and really accelerating development in a very agile fashion is opening up a whole so-called internet of value or money exchange. And the key drivers that are coming together and creating really a tsunami of disruption, not just blockchain on its own, but if you start adding artificial intelligence, uh, internet of things, internet of value, machine to machine learning, which I know is, is a topic here, and big data analytics, where these components are starting to converge just in the financial sector alone, we're starting to see major adoption, new ways of doing business, new business processes, and of course, opening up completely new market opportunities. So the blockchain value chain really sits across four key sectors or quadrants, if you wish. In the top left, value exchanges, and there's a whole list of potential applications there that are emerging as we speak. Identity and security is huge. Uh, a big topic here in Europe at the moment is the whole issue of privacy, uh, personal uh, information security, and of course, uh, tracking, money laundering, fraud, uh, anti-terrorism, and so forth. And the blockchain has emerged as potentially a key platform through which we could cryptographically secure information, personal information, 
transaction information, information of any sort, time stamp it, make it auditable, transparent and compliant with any jurisdiction or regulatory uh, inquirement. So huge opportunity in that space. Asset registries and fintech, which I've already mentioned. So what we're starting to see in this internet of value based on blockchain technologies on the left, value creation in a kind of shared economy fashion. Again, open sourcing innovation on a grand global scale. The management of that value and of course the exchange of the value. Now this is a rather busy slide and something has jumped there, but you can see already a raft of applications which we don't have time to go into right now that are starting to underscore what you could do with this technology in the space. An example is digital rights for music or for entertainment or digital media production can be recorded on a blockchain and can be distributed globally and payment received even in micro amounts on a pay-as-you-go basis near instantly and in a secure fashion, and also secure the rights of the artists without going through a Sony or an intermediary agent and so forth. So uh, a lot of new applications and new business opportunities starting to emerge. So what do you see in the fintech space is where you have in the center circle your incumbents, your existing players looking at new ways of applying blockchain technology in, for instance, predictive analytics, uh, wealth management, digital identity management, payment processing and transfers, which has become a huge uh, business opportunity, uh, securities and settlements. There's a number of exchanges like NASDAQ, the Australian Securities Exchange, starting to adopt blockchain technology to speed up transactions and to get uh, settlements down to, post-trade settlements down to T plus zero. Around that, we're starting to see new uh, plays from crowdfunding to foreign exchange remittances, especially diaspora communities, peer-to-peer -peer lending, digital banking, mobile payments, uh, digital and cryptocurrencies. Every major uh, economic player in the world is starting to look at digital currencies to replace cash, such as what uh, India is doing as we speak. Um, with a number of implications and, of course, blockchain technology underscoring that. So these are the sort of six key impact areas that I've identified that bears watching in terms of where this disruption is starting to, to take hold. I mentioned digital identity, asset registries, payments and benefits processing, and lately, in a big way, entering the space is Internet of Things, machine-to-machine uh, -machine learning, artificial intelligence, and big data. Digital currencies and loyalty schemes for banks and financial institu institutions, loyalty schemes is a great way for customer acquisition and retention, and that's becoming a major player as well. And of course, capital markets and the opening up of the second economy. An example of where this is starting to happen at scale, a few weeks ago I was in Shanghai, with the big uh, blockchain summit, uh, Asia blockchain summit that lasted for a week, where Wang Xiang, which is China's largest automotive parts manufacturer, is investing 30 billion US dollars in an innovative smart city with the ambition to, within five years, create a model smart city for China for self driving vehicles using blockchain technology for digital identity and, and the moving of Internet of Things and assets, and of course, artificial intelligence. IBM, Microsoft, Consensus, Ethernet, Square, Hyperledger, and others are already engaged in these projects. And this model will become the template for 10 other smart cities to support rapid urbanization in China in the next five to 10 years. So they already foresee cities where there will be driverless vehicles within five years. You're probably aware that driverless Uber vehicles are already running on the streets of San Francisco. So these things are real and they are coming and they're gonna be hugely disruptive. In France itself, BMP Paribas has announced that by the end of this month, 
if the French government approve from a regulatory perspective the issuing of mini bonds in partnership with these consortia uh, partners to issue mini bonds that will become securities on a token-based blockchain platform to support startups in the French ecosystem uh, to raise capital through equity, token-based equity, for, uh, for their ventures. So these impacts and, and, and innovations are actually happening in your space as we speak. And this will be a forthcoming attraction in the very, very near future. So in conclusion, I think we're going to see um, across all the sectors and from all these uh, initiatives that I've seen on your floor here at the Expo and in the various talks, blockchain and distributed ledger technology really coming into play in a very innovative, disruptive fashion and is going to allow us to do new things in new ways in the very, very near future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.